Okay, well, conveniently we're in a location that actually has LTE, so what we're gonna do is to obtain your weather, go to weather.gov or just Google it, uh, Utah weather repeaters or whatever state you live in, right? It'll take you to the NOAA Weather Service Station website, and there we have all of our frequencies. So, can quickly and easily zoom in on the vernal one. There we are, WXM23, and that's all we need to know is 162.4 is the frequency so we will load that up so we're going to get out of channel mode switch right over to frequency mode frequency mode okay and it's just as simple as this one one six, six two, two point four four zero 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 wednesday and wednesday night mostly clear there you go highs in the 50s lows in the 30s Let's just listen from the start to the end. It's about a five-minute transmission. I don't know how uh, how far these will reach into the backcountry, but anyway, it gives you good information if you can if you can receive it. So what you're going to want for sure, as I've done, is taking a bunch of screenshots on my phone everywhere I travel. Obviously, I have my phone with me, handy little computer in your pocket, and it will. Uh, you know, and then you can maintain all your frequencies for all your repeaters statewide, your weather repeaters, et cetera, et cetera. 23 yeah. invernal, broadcasting on a frequency of 162.40 megahertz and originating from the National Weather Service office in Grand Junction, Colorado. The flood advisory is now in effect until Friday evening. The flood advisory continues for the Green River near Jetson until Friday evening. At 10.30 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time Wednesday, the stage was 9.0 feet. Action stage is 9.0 feet. Flood stage is 10.8 feet. Forecast. The river will oscillate around Bankville stage with a maximum value of 9.3 feet Thursday morning. Impact. At 9.0 feet, the Green River reaches Bankville resulting in minor flooding of low-lying agricultural land and bank erosion. Red flag warning in effect from noon to 8 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time Friday for gusty winds, low relative humidity and dry fuels for fire weather zones 200, 202, 486, 487, and 490. The National Weather Service in Grand Junction has issued a red flag warning for gusty winds, low relative humidity and dry fuels, which is in effect from noon to 8 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time Friday. The fire weather watch is no longer in effect. Affected area, in Colorado, fire weather zone 200 Little Snake forecast area and fire weather zone 202 White River forecast area. In Utah, fire weather zone 486 Eastern U Inter Basin, fire weather zone 487 Book Cliffs and fire weather zone 490 Colorado River Basin. Winds, south 10 to 20 miles per hour with gusts up to 35 miles per hour. Relative humidity, 10 to 15%. Impacts, conditions will become favorable for the rapid ignition, growth, and spread of fires. A red flag warning means that critical fire weather conditions are either occurring now or will shortly. A combination of strong winds, low relative humidity, and warm temperatures can contribute to extreme fire behavior. For eastern Utah and western Colorado, here is the latest weather synopsis. Hot and sunny conditions can be expected today with some isolated to scattered storms this afternoon mainly over the high terrain. Expect mainly gusty outflow winds with storms today. Temperatures will continue to run 10 to 15 degrees above normal today and Friday with critical fire weather conditions for portions of eastern Utah and northwest Colorado Friday. Moisture increases Friday night into Saturday, with cooler conditions and potential for heavy rain and localized flooding. Stay tuned to the latest forecast due to these upcoming weather changes and plan accordingly. Now for the National Weather Service forecast for the Eastern U Inter Basin including Vernal, Jensen and Roosevelt. This afternoon, sunny. Highs in the 80s. West winds 10 to 15 miles per hour with gusts to around 25 miles per hour. Tonight, mostly clear. Lows in the 50s. Northwest winds 10 to 15 miles per hour with gusts to around 20 miles per hour until midnight becoming light. Friday, sunny. Highs 85 to 95. 
South winds 10 to 15 miles per hour with gusts to around 20 miles per hour in the afternoon. Friday night, mostly cloudy with a 50% chance of rain showers. Lows in the 50s. Southwest winds 10 to 15 miles per hour with gusts to around 25 miles per hour until midnight becoming light. And now the extended forecast, Saturday and Saturday night, not as warm. Mostly cloudy. Rain showers. High 65 to 75. Lows 45 to 55. Sunday and Sunday night, mostly cloudy. A 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms. High 65 to 75. Lows 35 to 45. Monday and Monday night, partly cloudy. A 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Highs 55 to 65. Lows in the 30s. Tuesday and Tuesday night, mostly clear. Highs in the 60s. Lows 35 to 45. Wednesday and Wednesday night, mostly clear. Highs 65 to 75. Lows in the 40s. And now the forecast for the eastern Uintown Mountains, including Dutch John. This afternoon, mostly sunny with a 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms. High 65 to 75. West winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, partly cloudy. Lows in the 40s. West winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Gusts up to 20 miles per hour until midnight. Friday, sunny in the morning then becoming partly sunny. Highs in the 70s. South winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Gusts up to 30 miles per hour in the afternoon. Friday night, mostly cloudy. A chance of rain showers until midnight, then rain showers likely after midnight. Lows in the 40s. South winds 10 to 20 miles per hour with gusts to around 30 miles per hour. Chance of showers 60%. And now the extended forecast, Saturday and Saturday night, cooler, mostly cloudy, rain showers with a slight chance of thunderstorms, highs in the 50s, lows in the 30s, Sunday and Sunday night, breezy, mostly cloudy, rain showers likely, thunderstorms likely and snow showers, highs in the 50s, lows in the 20s, chance of precipitation 60%. Monday and Monday night, partly cloudy. A 40% chance of snow showers and thunderstorms. Highs 35 to 45. Lows 15 to 25. Tuesday and Tuesday night, mostly clear. Highs 45 to 55. Lows 25 to 35. Wednesday and Wednesday night, mostly clear. Highs in the 50s. Lows in the 30s. The 11 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time Regional Weather Observations. At Vernal, it was mostly sunny. The temperature was 75 degrees, the dew point 38, and the relative humidity 26%. The wind was variable at 3 miles an hour. The pressure was 30.07 inches and steady. Elsewhere across Utah, it was sunny, with a temperature of 81 at Price, and 88 at Canyon Lands Airport. At Provo, it was mostly sunny, with a temperature of 82. In western Colorado, at Grand Junction, it was sunny, with a temperature of 82. At Craig, it was mostly sunny, with a temperature of 76. In southwest Wyoming, it was sunny. It was 73 at Evanston, and 75 in Rock Springs. Once again, at 11 a.m., at Vernal, it was mostly sunny, with a temperature of 75. Expect increased flows on the Green River below Flaming Gorge Reservoir due to releases, flows in area rivers, streams, and creeks will continue to run at elevated levels as the recent snowmelt works downstream. Significant flooding is not forecast at this time as many waterways peak for a second time early next week. Many streams and creeks will run at bankful conditions through the middle of the week causing localized lowland flooding. Anyone planning to recreate on area waterways should maintain awareness and use an abundance of caution in or near the water. Areas that will need to be watched closely include the Yampa River, Elk River, and other small streams in the upper Yampa Basin. 
Flaming Gorge Reservoir oil decrease releases to 7,600 cubic feet per second and remain at this level until further notice. The current time is 12.09 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Thanks for listening to NOAA Weather Radio WXM23 in Vernal, broadcasting on a frequency of 162.40 MHz and originating from the National Weather Service office in Grand Junction, Colorado. The flood advisory is now in effect until Friday evening. Warning for gusty Okay, so there you have it, folks. Uh, an example of a broadcast. That sucker went on for 10 minutes. So that's the longest one I've ever listened to. Uh, I particularly liked how the automated robot talking dude, whenever he says, oh, it's bright and sunny, he kind of has an inflection in his voice, like, like he's delivering some good news, even though it's a robot. Um, you can tell, I mean, that's an example of just how, how detailed the information can be that you can obtain in the backcountry uh, or traveling or wherever you're at on this type of radio or any type of radio, I suppose, that can actually receive that weather information. So even if you can't broadcast or uh, do duplex broadcast or, sorry, I keep saying broadcast, uh, even if you can't communicate or transmit and receive either simplex from radio to radio or to a repeater, it's still a pretty invaluable tool for the weather aspect. So the weather stations probably broadcast out at such a high power that you can probably get them almost anywhere you're at. I would imagine that's the way the system is. I don't know all the details, but there you have it. So there's just an example. Now, I'm pretty confident that we're gonna get down here into the valley, get close to one of these repeaters, and we're gonna have success in actually making my first uh, communication contact. So that's what we're gonna try next. If we don't achieve that, well, this was your demonstration of these tools, or this tool, and uh, a little adventure putting it to practical use up here in the woods, the Uinta Mountains in eastern Utah. So thanks for joining along. We'll see you on the next one.